Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, my apologies for not posting a video the last couple of weeks. I got pretty sick and I lost my voice and uh, I don't know if you could hear it, it's still a little raspy, but I was completely unable to talk like for at least a few days in there and um, my voice just has not been itself lately. So anyway, finally kind of feeling better. So I thought I'd come back and record a video today. Today we're going to be talking about doing uh, proof sheets. I usually set up my proof sheets in InDesign. Obviously you can use Illustrator, you can use Photoshop if you want. I find InDesign is always the easiest way to do it. So let me just take you through it real quick. I'm going to start off here with this business card. So basically the way that I like to set up my proofs is by type. So type of job. So in this case, a business card is going to be different, obviously, than a sticker, or it's going to be different than a banner. So I want to set up a proof sheet specifically for each one of those types of items. And the reason why is because these different uh, uh, specifications here, or order details, are going to be different based on what your type of job are, or what your type of printing um, obviously, if you're going to do uh, laser etching for a pen or something like that, uh, you're not going to be printing in ink colors. You're just going to be etching onto the actual pen itself. So these ink colors would be totally useless for a situation like that. Or in the case of, uh, let's say, doing a banner, you're going to want to add somewhere to indicate whether the banner has grommets or how many grommets you know per foot or whatever the case is. So I always set up multiple proof sheets based on what the item is. Now I've constructed this in InDesign and what I've done here is I've used, um, uh, let me zoom out here. Um, what I've done is I've used tables to create all of the different specifications here. So if I kind of click in here, you can see each one of these is a column or a row and I have different things set to different heights or um, I can just kind of move things around as far as width goes so that uh, uh, obviously the customer name you want to have this field longer than another um, so that's the way I constructed it is with tables it also allows you to do things like if you have an ink color here um, in this case this business card is set to a specific Pantone color right I can highlight this cell and I can indicate which color based off of the artwork that's that um, is dropped into the InDesign file. So it allows you to um, customize the proof rather quickly and specifically for that item type. In this case I want to have a quantity, I want to have uh, what kind of paper stock, the overall size of the piece, in this case, you know whether they're rounded corners, square cut corners, um, do we have a lamination on there? And if there's anything that is kind of out of the ordinary, I can put it over here in my finishing details. Uh, you can see if I click my W key here to preview this, this has kind of a gold foil on the uh, backside. And so I've indicated here ink color, gold foil, so that the customer can see all of those, uh, all of those things. Uh, I, obviously, I can um, customize this even further if I want to have different things for like ink colors for the front, ink colors for the back. Um, if I want to put, uh, you know, front and back, or let's say this was a trifold and you want to put each panel separate, you can do things like that. Uh, There's certain things here that you're always going to want to have regardless of what type of job it is. Obviously, you're going to put the artwork itself here. I always want to put a indicator what kind of scale we're at. Is this 100% to scale? Is this not to scale? Is this uh, set to you know quarter size or whatever the case? If this was for a banner and the banner's you know 20 feet wide by four feet tall, you're not going to be able to put a 20 foot by four feet tall PDF in this. Uh, see, I think I have it set. Yeah, it's eight and a half by 11, right? You're not going to put a a 20 by four. Uh, a banner 100% to scale right you're gonna have to scale that down and you're gonna have to indicate it somewhere you know this is a hey, quarter size or one tenth or just say you know artwork not to scale and then somewhere down here indicate the actual dimension size um, which I've indicated up here for this business card but I also put 
a indicator here that these are indeed printed to scale. So if once my customer, once I create a PDF from this, and I send it to my customer, they print it, they can see exactly how the fonts are going to look or how the, you know, the colors are going to output as far as size and things like that. I always put some kind of disclaimer on a proof sheet. Um, this is just kind of a, a quick rundown, but you know, you, you obviously are going to come up with your own, you know, based on what you, your liabilities are for your customer or, or for yourself as a, uh, um, a, a print broker. Um, I also obviously are always going to put somewhere for somebody to sign or print their name, put the date in a later video. I can show once you export how to actually like create fields. Um, there's lots of other videos out there that already show how to do stuff like that. But, um, basically if you want to have like an e-signature, you can set that up, but, uh, you always want to have at least something like this. So worst case scenario, you send this to a customer and, uh, you know, they approve it and either they hand write it on there and scan it and send it back to you or just take a picture. Most of the time, it's, this is just a formality. Most customers just look at this and they just email you back and just say, hey, man, it's good to go. You know, um, that's most most of the time how uh, customers will just email a, a proof back, not even filling this form out, you know, or, or not even setting it as a form. This is more just an indicator how we want the artwork to look and then obviously the order details or the specs to make sure that they all match up the worst thing you can do for a customer is send them a proof and have the incorrect uh, print specs on there right the reason you set a proof is because you want to make sure everything's correct there's so many tiers of a job that can um have mistakes happen whether it's the person who quoted the job the person who wrote the job up the pre-press worker who did the graphics and then on to the printing and then the finishing and then ultimately the shipping you know you're talking about six levels of folks that touch a job from start to finish right this is kind of your gold standard this is your you know your holy grail that you uh that you're you're using um, these are the Ten Commandments, right, of, uh, of printing is a proof sheet. So if your proof indicated, is indicated incorrectly somewhere, you know, hopefully it gets caught early enough along the steps. But ultimately, this is your kind of your, uh, uh, how would I say, this, this is your fallback, basically, so that, hey, look, I sent this to the customer. They reviewed everything. They said, it looks okay go ahead and print it and now you're covered so that uh, if there is a mistake on it but it followed the specifications on the proof you could just say hey look i fault we followed the proof sheet you approve the proof sheet so basically you know it's your mistake now obviously you don't you know there's you don't want to have any mistakes if you can but um that's one way of looking at it i have another one here for an envelope Again, this is uh, going to have different specifications to it because an envelope printing is going to be different than um, a business card. So this has a larger disclaimer because there's certain things like uh, postal regulations that need to be uh, taken into account. You have uh, window sizes. You know, if this was a number 10 with a window, you could indicate those that information here. But again, the approval the disclaimer that's kind of common also the work order and customer name that's all that's kind of common as well uh, I have one here for a sticker so a sticker is going to be printed one-sided so I don't have to indicate a you know two-sided printing mm -hmm. but in this case uh, I want to have something as far as you know the uh, uh, what kind of lamination type or what kind of adhesive that we're going to use for the sticker uh, what kind of material you're going to be using um, let's say if this was a not a sticker but a, a label you know does it come in a roll uh, how many are on a roll uh, what's the orientation of the roll is it you know printed face up or printed to the side whatever the case you can put all of that information on your proof sheet i have one here for a screen print this one's a little bit different because I have ink colors down here and up here I have more information as far as like what is the type of 
uh, item. In this case, let's say uh, we wanted a hooded sweatshirt as well. We can put uh, black and let's say we wanted 10 extra large hooded sweatshirts, right? So uh, we can add all of that information in here so that we, when we send this over to the customer, they can approve not only the artwork itself, but also the specs as far as, you know, what type of ink or um, what size of the shirts or how many based on the, uh, the size. So all of these things are good, good things to put on a proof sheet. Some companies, they don't even do a full PDF like this. They just send a one-up PDF of the artwork itself to the customer and they indicate all of this, these specs within an email. Um, I like doing it this way just because it's a little bit more formal you get to put your logo on there. It looks a little bit more official, a little bit more professional in my opinion. Um, one thing that's universal when you create a proof, whether you're doing a proof sheet like this or if you're just doing a one-up proof, when you export this to create a PDF, you want to make sure that your um, output is set correctly. So if I go into my output tab here, uh, it's going to look similar from within Illustrator, but you want to make sure that this is set to a uh, some kind of CMYK value um, destination. The reason being is that a lot of images are set to RGB. So the printing is going to be done in CMYK, whether you're, you know, no matter what kind of um, type of printing you're doing. So all of that's going to be changed from RGB to CMYK. Now, if on your proof, you leave everything set to RGB, it may not look exactly like how it's going to look when it's printed. Um, in this case, I had a customer who sent me a uh, RGB file not too long ago. And when I send them the proof back, I totally forgot to convert it over to CMYK. And basically what happened was when we went to print it, it looked so much more dull than what the, the actual uh, proof looked like because that RGB had a lot of blue in it and it really kind of popped on the screen. And when we printed it, it looked kind of flat. And so the customer was very upset because they said, hey, look, you know, it, your proof did not match up with what your print did. Now, obviously, that's always going to be the case somewhat because you're viewing a proof on a monitor and a monitor is set to RGB. But if you set your proof correctly when you output, if I go, go back in there and export it again, um, you always want to make sure that you're converting to destination. So you don't want to leave this uh, on no color conversion. You want to definitely convert it to, de uh, to a CMYK. And that way, when I export it out, all of the colors should transfer over to CMYK. So it's not going to be 100% accurate as far as how it looks on the screen, as far as what it's going to look like when it prints. But it's always better to do that because it's a little bit more accurate than just leaving it as RGB. So that's basically it from here. I would take this and I would either attach it to an email or you could do a physical print, sometimes a I've had customers walk into the shop and, and just want to look at it. So this is not a hard copy proof, obviously. You know, you, when you talk about doing hard copy proofs, that's going to be an actual physical printed sample that you're going to do on your equipment and then send off to your customer for approval. But most of the time, you're going to always start with a, uh, a soft PDF proof, in this case, um, putting it on a print or a, a proof sheet sending it to the customer so that they can review it, sign it, and then send it back to you. Um, if you have any questions as far as how I created, you know, how I created this, or you want to see this in a little bit more detail, uh, you know, please indicate in the comments. I can always do a follow-up video and, and show exactly, you know, from start to finish, you know, how I create the boxes and move things around. But again, I, I used um, InDesign and I used tables to uh, create these so that I could scale everything um, not independently of one another, but you know, all together. So that's just the way I do it. That's uh, I find that using the tables and using InDesign is the easiest way, 
and over my career career I've built you know numerous uh, proof sheets you know not only for myself individually um, just sending out uh, proofs as like side work and stuff like that but the la the all the companies that I've worked for you know we all had our own proof sheet in one way or the other where it be via email or whether it be via a InDesign file creating a PDF. So anyway, that's it. I just thought I would share that with you and give you guys some ideas about how to create your own proof sheets. Um, I think this is a very, very important part of the printing process. In fact, in a lot of ways, it's the most important part because it'll correct any mistakes that were done in the quoting process that maybe um, uh, were skipped over or were missed for some reason. A lot of times when files come into pre-press, you look at things, how they were quoted, and you go, hey, look, you know, uh, you quoted it this way for the customer, but we can't fit it on that kind of sheet size, so we're going to have to use a bigger sheet, and it's going to change your price, things like that. So um, obviously, bef before it gets to the actual printing part and all the way to the shipping aspect of it, you want to catch as many mistakes as you can. Pre-press is basically the last line of defense before it actually goes out to be printed and you create a physical uh, copy of something. So up until this point, basically, it doesn't cost anything besides just your time and effort. So that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, I wanted to let you guys know I'm real close to a 1,000 subscribers now. I really appreciate all the folks that have subscribed over the last uh, few months. And uh, like I said, you know, it has been a couple weeks since I've done a video because I was sick, but I, I definitely tend to or uh, plan to do more videos over the, the uh, coming weeks, try to keep it a little bit more on a regular basis. If you guys have any questions about anything that I've talked about today or want to see anything in particular, please leave them down in the comments below. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And uh, as always, I'll catch you on the next video. Take care. Bye.